What's going on guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my page. Um, that's mostly going to be about tufting. My name is Joe, or you can call me Joseph. Either one is fine with me. What I wanted to do today for my first video is pretty much break down the essential items that I believe you need to get started with your tufting journey. So if you happen to like, you've seen tufting come across your algorithm on your For You page or Instagram and you're just like, what was that? What is that? That's so interesting. Like that's what happened for me. Um, and you wanted to, you know, look into it some more and then decide to dive in. This is gonna be a good video to get you started. I'm just going to break down pretty much the things that I got to start my journey and things that I believe are really important. And if you stick around towards the end of the video, I'm gonna throw in some extras that just make the process a lot more fun. I'm a lot more efficient, um, helps you out throughout your creative process. So um, let's get started. Item number one, super important. You can't tuft without a tufting machine. I got this from tuftlove.com. I'm not sponsored in any way, but I mean, if you want to sponsor me, I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but I got this from tuftlove.com. I went through a lot of research and looked around at the different sites that were providing tufting machines. Uh, this is going to be a cut pile machine and there's different kinds of tufting guns that you can get. I decided to go with cut pile because I like the finished look that this machine provides. So definitely recommend. Luckily, I I found their site while they were running a deal on their tufting machines. So the, the machine was discounted pretty significantly. Definitely see if you can get lucky if they're running a deal and you can get a good price for it. I recommend investing in a machine from a reputable site like Tuft Love. You could go through Amazon as well. Um, and you can get a more affordable machine, you know, for people that are on a budget. I think that's a good idea too. The only thing is that you're kind of taking a risk in regards to the quality of the machine. Those, those machines don't have any big companies backing them that have a support team or a technical support team that can help you, um, like Tough Glove. I think it'll be good for you in the long run. If there's anything that you want to spend a little bit more money on, I would recommend it being the machine. But like I said, Amazon is a great place to get a budget-friendly um, machine. So those are going to be your options when it comes to that. All right, so next items are what I use to pretty much maintain my machines and keep it, uh, keep it up and running, uh, make sure that I'm supporting the longevity of this machine. And to start off, I clean my machine mostly with compressed air. So I take this and it blows out any of the microfiber or the dust that's building up within the, um, the components of the machine. It's very, very helpful. If you wanted a more um, in-depth clean, you can get brushes as well. Um, this is like a bristle brush that I use um, from a old like shoe cleaner. I recommend something like this. Or if you want it to be a little softer, a paint brush is amazing. I love using this. Um, this pretty much gets in like all of the, the inner parts of the machine. It helps me clean that out with ease. So the bristles are very soft, not very abrasive. I recommend a paintbrush to get in there as well. Another thing that you're gonna need is going to be oil. Oil is super, super, super important when it comes to um, maintaining your machine. I got this one from Walmart. It's a multi-purpose three-in-one oil uh, that you can use on many, many different things. Um, I think I use that oil pretty much before every tufting session. You want to protect those moving parts and you want to keep them, um, you want to keep them up and running for as long as you can because you're investing a lot of money into this machine and you don't want it to break down or give you any problems. And the best way to avoid that is by maintaining it every single time that you use it. So I wouldn't recommend WD-40. I believe that it's a solvent and not a lubricant. So it's very different. I think that for the long run, investing in a multi-purpose like machine oil or something like that is going to help with um, the longevity of your guns. All right, so the next item is going to be a threader. So this thing is awesome. It helps with threading your gun. People in the tufting community lose these all the time because they, you know, they're just like, they're so easy to misplace. Luckily, I haven't lost this one. This was my first one. Um, it came with my gun in the bundle when I ordered it, but the threader is great because there's a hole on the needle of your gun and getting yarn through that hole 
is um, very hard to do if you don't have a threader. The yarn falling out of your gun is already a frustrating and annoying process. So having a threader on hand makes that a lot more, uh, a lot less complicated for you. So get a threader, it's really great. Next item on the list is going to be yarn. So these are skeins of yarn. I learned that word when I looked into the hobby. Didn't know that was what they were called, but uh, these are gonna be yarn skeins that you can get from any fabric store. Um, you can even go to Walmart for uh, to get them pretty cheap. Um, I go to Joann's personally. That has been hands down my favorite fabric store, period. I love Joann's. Um, they have so many great deals. They have an abundance of yarn, at least for the area, the ones that are in my area. Um, they even have brand exclusive yarn that always seems to be discounted and on sale. And then on top of that, when you go in, they have an additional discount that you can throw on if you're a member. It's great. I love Joann's. Um, not sponsored by the way, but Joann's be trying to sponsor me too. <laughs> uh, just kidding. But uh, definitely check out a fabric store. For, um, for good deals on yarn. I follow pretty much all the fabric stores just to see who's having a good deal at the moment. Um, but I always tend to find myself going to Joann's. Um, but yarn is essential. You can't make a rug without the yarn. So um, you're gonna be buying a lot of it too. So making sure you find a good place that has great deals is going to be a lifesaver. Definitely check out Joann's. Uh, they, have, they have a great selection, so yeah. All right, the next item on the list is going to be a frame. So as you can see behind me, this is my frame. And when it comes to frames, it can be a little, it can be a little complicated or it can't be. It just really depends on how you want to do it. But um, I built that myself and it was very fulfilling. I loved putting it together. Um, I think I have, I think I have a, um, a, like a diagram of pretty much like that I drew out while I was, um, planning on getting all of these supplies and planning on creating a frame. Let me go get that real quick. All right, so I ended up finding it and uh, this is like, <laughs> yeah, this is a little diagram that I made uh, of the frame and how I wanted it. I like went into Lowe's and I'm like, yeah, can I get this please? He's just like, what? What am I, what, what am I looking at right now? I'm like, I just, I seen this man. <laughs> but um, no, they were very helpful. Um, they're very helpful with uh, getting the supplies and recommending what kind of lumber to get and the sizes and all of that. So um, there's plenty of great videos uh, that people have put together of building your own frame. So definitely check them out. Awesome videos, very informative. And that's pretty much what I watched when it came to learning what I needed to create this. Um, they have, there's companies that sell starter frames that are a bit smaller. I think Tough Glove actually does and like tuftinggun.com and stuff, um, Tough the World. They do starter frames that are about three by three feet, I think. And they're a bit smaller and they don't even have a stand. They actually usually connect to a table by clamps. And if that's something that you wanted to do, by all means, you can buy a starting frame from them. I personally just didn't want to do that. I wanted a standing frame. I wanted to build it. I don't know, I just wanted to get my hands dirty, I guess, and you know, put together something that, um, that I can be proud of. So definitely recommend building a frame. You can even build a starting frame too, if you wanted and um, get the materials to, and the clamps to um, attach to a table. So I think just building the frame is the most affordable option in the long run, um, as opposed to buying a pre-built one. But if you don't have the means to build your own frame, definitely recommend just buying a starter one and then eventually graduating um, to a bigger frame. So four by four foot was what I wanted to start with. I thought that was a great starting point for me. Um, I didn't want it to be too big or too small and I'm very proud of it. So it's it's been great, I love it. I get questions about my frame all the time and um, yeah, that's pretty much how I got this put together. So yeah, definitely need a frame. All right, the next super important item on the list of essentials is going to be the tufting cloth, the fabric. So what's on my frame right now is the fabric that you need to put the yarn into and create your pieces, your rugs. So there's different places that you can get the fabric from. I got mine, for, I get mine from Amazon now, like that one is from Amazon, my last few ones were from Amazon as well. But when I purchased my gun, I actually bought a bundle. With the machine came tufting fabric from tuftglove.com and that fabric is great. It's just a little bit more pricey for me at the moment um, to be buying regularly, but 
that fabric is great. There's, um, there's different types of fabric that you can get too. Um, there's primary tufting cloth. There is monk's cloth that people use. There's burlap that people use. Um, there is a creator, um, her name is Sam. And I watched one of her videos actually breaking down how good each fabric compares to one another. And I wanna try burlap. Burlap is like the most affordable um, fabric that you can get and people make like amazing pieces on burlap. Um, but the thing is, is that I just, I'm having trouble finding it in the size of my frame. Like I only see it go up to like three feet. So I think I might have to get like a, like a big, big bulk order in order to get the size that I need. So it's why I've been kind of avoiding burlap at the moment and just been sticking to primary tufting cloth. Um, but you do have options when it comes to fabric. Just do your research, look into it a bit and see which one is good for you. Primary cloth, super, super important. It's essential, you need it. Um, so yeah. All right, so next on the list is a projector. Once you have your frame set up, once you have your cloth on your frame, a projector is so important to getting the design on translated onto your onto your fabric. So I I personally love a projector. I don't. It, I know it's not the only method um, that you need to that you need in order to transfer your design onto your fat onto your frame, but it's the method that I think is the most efficient. I refuse to pay anything more than a hundred dollars when I was looking for a projector. Um, I got this from Best Buy too. It's the um, it's the Vonkyo brand. Um, I got it from them. I don't know what model this is. I kind of forgot, but. The, uh, this projector is great and something about something about the projector too is that I had a cheaper projector before and I was lucky enough to get this projector because of the people that have supported me so far and the commissions that I've been able to do. I like appreciate you guys so much. It's um, y'all have been amazing and helping me upgrade my setup and the um, and the equipment that I use. Before getting this, I realized that the the quality of your projector is important. Like, yeah, I don't want to spend more than $100 on that projector, but the one that I had was a lot cheaper and it wasn't really displaying the details of the design when I needed to translate it to my frame. So like getting the finer details was something that was harder to do with a cheaper projector, cheaper quality. But once I upgraded to this one, oh man, like, getting my designs onto my frame was seamless and it was like less of a headache less time consuming i love this projector um so hopefully this lasts me for a long time because i'm very happy with this um with this brand and with this model so when you're looking into a projector yeah like if you're budgeting like have a budget for sure but just keep in mind that the quality of the proje of the projector does matter when you're trying to get your design onto your page so or onto your frame so yeah keep that in mind all right so next item after you've got your projector and you've got your design onto your frame markers are super important well actually it can be after um, you need the markers to help you get the design onto your page when you're projecting it uh, i mean i keep saying page what the hell onto your frame when you're projecting it so Definitely, definitely get some markers. Sharpies are, you know, tried and true. They work great. Um, you can even get some different colored Sharpies if you have like a lot of details and you wanna like differentiate um, what color goes where. You can definitely do that too. Um, but yeah, definitely get yourself some Sharpies, some markers. All right, so next item that is very, very important is gonna be carpet adhesive. This is gonna be Roberts 3095. I love this brand. I love using Roberts 30, 3095. It's the only carpet adhesive that I've used so far on every single one of my pieces. Um, I do know that there's other glues out there that you can use, but this one's great because it, like, it dries kind of tacky, which also helps you get your backing fabric on to your piece as well. Um, but it keeps it like bendy and um, flexible. Um, some, other, some other adhesives might, be a li might make your product a lot more stiff. And depending on what kind of piece you're making, that could be great, you know? Um, you know, if you're making like a wall hanging or something or a coaster, maybe you want it to be a bit more stiff and rigid. Um, so you can look into those other glues if that's like something that you, um, that you wanna consider. But um, 
39, Robert's 30, 3095 has been working great for me so far. I want to look into some other glues as well, like some liquid latex. I just don't think that I'm there yet, so I definitely plan to look into other alternatives as time goes on. But in the meantime, Robert's 3095 has been great. All right, so when you're applying your carpet adhesive, you want to use something like this. This is a plastic putty knife that I have. I love this thing. It's been my go-to um, ever since I started. Um, but there's other ways that you can get your adhesive onto your onto your um, your pieces as well. Um, some people use gloves. Gloves are cool. They're okay. I personally don't use gloves um, super often. Maybe for like the edges of like my pieces, just kind of spreading it on that. But for the most part, I like to use a putty knife. I need to get a bigger one because this one's kind of small and I'm starting to do bigger pieces like this. But um, this helps me get an even coating of adhesive on my on my pieces. It dries evenly um, as well. Uh, so definitely recommend a putty knife to spread your carpet adhesive. So the next item is going to be a uh, backing fabric. And the backing fabric that I've been using um, for the most part has been felt. Um, I think felt is great, felt super easy, it's super affordable. You can go to any of these fabric stores that I was telling you guys about earlier and um, they can cut you out pieces of felt that you need for, your, um, for the projects that you work on. Um, you can even get a non-slip version of felt as well. Um, I don't know if that's in fabric stores like Joann's or Michael's, but I've found um, non-slip felt on Amazon for a pretty, for a pretty good price. And um, for things like coasters, for, um, for placemats, um, for wall hangings, I use regular felt. But for like floor rugs, I try to use non-slip felt as much as I can. Um, it's both of those, the both of those fabrics are great. I actually tried using a different um, backing recently for a bigger rug and it was a rug pad. So it was like a dual sided rug pad and one side was felt and one side was rubber. So I had it rubber side down because I, I didn't want it to be sliding around too much since this was like a big rug. That backing piece was really awesome to use and it really made the rug feel more premium because it was like thick too. The thing is that it wasn't cheap. So um, if, you're, if you're trying to factor in price um, and what's more affordable, I would stray away from that for the most part until you're ready to, to get a, um, a backing fabric like that. But yeah, just keep that in mind. You have those options, felt, non-slip backing, and a rug pad, so. So next up on the item, the essential item list is adhesive spray. I use Gorilla Glue adhesive spray. It's been doing great. Um, I love it. It's given me zero issues. There's different kinds of it, spray adhesive that you can get. The Gorilla one comes out like a mist, um, more liquidy, yeah, more of like a mist. Um, and the uh, there's other types that come out like, it comes out like a webbing. So it comes out in like a cone and it looks like a webbing as you spray it. I haven't really used it yet, but I plan to. There's nothing wrong with the other um, style of spray adhesive. I just haven't gotten around to using it since Gorilla Glue is something that I can pick up from the store real quick um, and have zero issues with. So. I recommend spray adhesive to make sure that your backing fabric stays adhered to your um, to your piece and that you know it doesn't come off, come apart, or um, anything like that. Because that's the last thing that you want is to get somebody a rug, make something really nice for somebody, the backing fabric comes off. Like that would be terrible. So next on the list, alongside your spray adhesive, when you're putting the backing on, getting it, you know, getting a nice clean finish on the back side of your rug you're gonna need a glue gun to achieve that. So I got this also, Gorilla Glue brand. You can get any brand of glue gun, it doesn't really matter. But um, this helps with the edges of your backing fabric. So when you're laying it out, you got your spray adhesive on there. It, for the most part, it's, it's secured. Finishing off the edges with this is super important in getting a clean look. So I had to like learn that the hard way. Like there was trial and error when it came to backing my rugs and um, getting like a nice clean finish. Um, I still need more practice with it, but a glue gun has helped with that significantly. And um, I'll probably make a video if that's something that you guys are interested in about backing a rug. So yeah, definitely get a glue gun, very, very important. Right, the next item on the list is a vacuum of some sort. I have a regular vacuum that I use. I also use a hand vacuum. My, one of my bigger investments has been a shop vac. And uh, let me go show you what that is real quick. 
boom. This is uh, something that I was able to luckily find at like a liquidation shop. Uh, usually those things can be pricey, but I think I got that for like 50% off, maybe a little bit more. It's about like a three to four gallon shop vac. It holds so much in there. Having a shop vac on you is gonna be really helpful in making sure your space stays clean as you work. I definitely invest in a vacuum because you are gonna need it for sure. All right, and the last thing on the essentials list is going to be a mask, a respirator. And this is an item that helps with the dust particles and the microfibers that get put into the air. So we're not supposed to be breathing that stuff in. It can definitely um, be unhealthy for you in the long run. Um, and especially if you're using spray adhesives like this Gorilla Glue, when I spray this, I can, when I get a big whiff of it, I'm like, oh damn, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to be breathing this in. So getting a mask or a respirator will help um, mitigate the, um, the negative effects of working with products like this. So I'm all about making sure you stay healthy, making sure you protect your lungs, protect yourself, because this is a very fun hobby, but it could have some downside downsides if you don't protect yourself. So that was it for the essentials, and we're gonna get into the extras. So um, the things that are helpful to have, but aren't necessary. Um, it helps your process become more efficient or more fun um, or more clean. These items will be great for you to invest in as time goes on after you've gotten the essentials out of the way. Now, the first item on the extras list, um, it can't actually, some people might even say that it's necessary, <laughs> uh, but I don't really think that it is, and unless you are trying to get a specific look on your rug, and that is a carpet trimmer is going to be very, very helpful when it comes to getting a, um, a more detailed rug or a more smoother look on your rug as well. Um, it helps you shave down any excess yarn. It helps you get those fine lines and those fine details and have has the design pop a little bit more, especially if you're doing something like, you know, an anime character or, you know, anything really. If you want it to be more detailed, getting a carpet trimmer is going to be a lifesaver. And also, Getting a leveler for your carpet trimmer helps with you shaving down any excess length on your rug. It has your rug become a lot more uniform and has a cleaner um, finished look. The reason why I do have this in the extras list is because, is because some people don't want that look. Some people want the shaggier look. Some people um, prefer it like that. And that's completely okay because you can still detail the shaggier looking rug with scissors so you can go in detail whatever you need to with scissors and call it a day it is going to be like a longer process because you're using scissors but it's still something that you can accomplish without the need of razor a razor or a trimmer um so the thing is that the trimmer is not cheap either it's pretty expensive um it's like i think i got mine for like 70 bucks for it it came with the trimmer and the attachment the level the leveling attachment um together um, but it's 70 bucks and that is an expense that some people just might not be able to um, to accomplish when they're trying to get started with this hobby. So it's not necessary, but it is a game changer, such a game changer. So I recommend that if you are able to get a trimmer, you do. It, it will make the process a lot more fun, a lot more efficient and a, a lot more uh, uh, streamlined um, when it comes to detailing. So definitely recommend a trimmer. Next on the extras list, I, I was hesitating. I almost put this in the essentials list because I think it's essential, but it is a yarn winder. I am so happy when I was able to finally like get a yarn winder and, um, and make what are called yarn cakes. So with yarn cakes, which are these right here, Yarn cakes are what you turn the yarn skeins into with that yarn winder. It pretty much just detangles that skein and, and forms it into these nice little cakes that um, when you're pulling the yarn from them as you're tufting, it just they just flow, it flows so seamlessly. So being able to make yarn cakes has been a game changer for me. Um, I wanna put the yarn winder in the essentials list, but you technically don't need it. But now that I have it, I would never go back to not using it personally. So another extra is going to be a um, air purifier. 
So I plan to get some air purifiers myself because this goes back into helping protect your lungs, helping protect yourself as you work. You wanna be able to do this for a long time without any negative side effects. So getting some air purifiers in your space will be very, very beneficial for catching those microfibers that you're not noticing as you're working and getting them out of the air. Getting them out of the air, filtering your air, making sure your air quality is as good as it can be at all times when you're working, it's definitely something that is next on my list to purchase because I definitely need it um, because I wanna make sure that I stay safe and that I can do this, like I said, for a long time. So air purifiers are definitely an extra that I would recommend. All right, next is gonna be lint rollers. Um, we all know what lint rollers are, I don't need to show you, but um, a lint roller is gonna be great for um, cleaning up your rug at the end and getting any excess um, uh, yarn fibers off of it when you're when you're trying to present it, maybe on like your social media page, you're trying to take glamour shots, uh, you want it to look nice and clean and finished, or when you're about to ship it out to say a potential uh, customer who's commissioned you, uh, cleaning that up and making sure that it's all good to go and looks clean uh, before you package it up is gonna be really important um, when you when you're sending that stuff out. So make sure you get a lint roller. It's very very useful I actually even use a metal lint remover and I uh, first I got this for my cats uh, this helps with like getting fur and um, dust out of like fabric like rugs <laughs> like my actual area rugs and like um, couches and all that stuff this is very useful. I started using this on my rugs mostly now um, that I work on and this has been a game changer too because you're able to get like the deep the deep yarn and the deep fabric that's in there um, that's trapped in there that maybe a lint roller won't be able to pick up on like the surface level so definitely recommend. And lastly on the extras list is going to be a tweezer so um, kind of anticlimactic <laughs> for the last one, but a tweezer is going to be very important in separating yarn as you're detailing it. Um, when you start making some uh, projects, you'll understand what I mean. Um, when you want to separate colors from one another or put yarn in the exact place that you need it to be before you start cutting it or detailing it, tweezers, super, super important or really nice to have as an extra. All right, and that is going to be it for the list of items that you need to get when it comes to starting your tufting journey. So um, I hope that this video helped. Um, I hope I made sense. <laughs> I tend to ramble and uh, recording videos for me is a little bit awkward, but I plan to just keep staying consistent and going at it and um, so I can make videos that are helpful for you for y'all and also growing with you too because I'm pretty new at this myself. Um, I'm not a professional at all, um, but I've just been trying to get all of the knowledge that I've had and that I've gained over, over this time that I've started tufting and share it with you guys as well. Um, hopefully um, this helps you and maybe you are like hesitating on jumping in to tufting and you're just not sure. Um, I would recommend that if you're able to do it, do it. This is not a cheap hobby to get started with in the slightest. I mean, I would never act like it is. Uh, it's definitely something that you gotta um, invest in. But if you're able to invest in it, it's it's in, it's incredible. I loved I loved that I picked this up. I loved that I was able to find this hobby and channel my creativity through it. It's been very fulfilling. Making rugs for people is so like I feel niche still. Um, so like when I make rugs for like friends and stuff, they get super excited and I've, you know, I've enjoyed making every single piece that I have so far. So yeah, I plan to stay consistent with this page. Um, I plan to upload some more videos when in regards to helping, helping y'all with tufting and also just showing like my growth as well. Um, I hope that we can all grow together. Follow my pages, my socials. I'm mostly active on Instagram and TikTok and um, I plan to be more active on here as well. So subscribe, you know? Wow, sound like a content creator. Subscribe, hit that subscribe button, dude. <laughs> but anyways, um, subscribe, you know, if this video helped you out um, and give it a like if that's something that you do. Um, but yeah, follow my socials to stay up to date on anything else that I'm doing or any of the projects that I'm working on like this Shikamaru rug. I can't wait to finish it, I'm very excited. But yeah, uh, hopefully, um, I see you all again in the next video. Have a great day. Peace.